Good morning students. How are you all? Hope you all are fine and doing good and watching my videos. Today we will continue our chapter, chapter 4 of civics, key element of democratic government. Now today we will continue the chapter with the topic participation. How did people participate? Let's see a very recent example. Indian farmers protest three farmer act of farmers bill which was passed by the parliament of india in september 2020 in which farmer have to sell their product directly to the big buyers but farmer were not ready for this so farmer mainly from punjab and haryana began a movement named delhi chalo in which thousands of farming union members marched towards the national capital this was in form of dharna and rally and as a result, this law has been halted by Supreme Court of India. Now, let's take second example, a fight against corruption. What was the basic idea when Anna Hazare started it? It was with dharna or with the right to have an access to the Lokpal or working around the Lokpal. So, what we are trying to do under participation? We are trying to participate by taking an interest in the working of government and by criticizing it when required. There are many ways in which people express their views and make government understand what action they should take. These include dharna, rallies, strike, signature campaign, etc. Things that are unfair and unjust are also brought forward. Newspapers, magazines and TV also play a role in discussing government issues and responsibilities. And the way for people to participate is by organizing themselves into social movements that seek to challenge the government and its functioning. Member of minority community, Dalit, Adivasi, women and other are often able to participate in this manner. So these are some ways through which we try to participate. We try to bring in people for the mass movement. However, the most important part of the participation is voting. So people vote and they vote to elect the leaders. When the leaders are elected, these leaders represent the people who have voted for them. Then representatives on behalf of the people take the various decisions when they are taking these decisions they are considering the voice of people so they are considering what the people wants what the people are looking for now democratic government has a tenure for which it is there so let's say in india tenure is five years in united states it is four years so every five years in india you would have elections and then you would have re-elections so the same person can elect it by next term or not would be the decision based on the election process now if a country people are alert and interested in how the country is run the democratic character of the government will be stronger now the next thing is conflict and resolving conflict so that's again is the key aspect of a democratic government. It is seen that conflict can lead to violence and death when one group decides that it is all right to use force to prevent the other group from protesting. Conflict arises when people of varied culture, religion, region or economic background do not get along with each other or when some among them feel that they are being discriminated against. So, as I have told you that river too can be a source of conflict between states. Sharing of river water between different states that the river goes through, it becomes an issue of conflict. For example, Kaveri water dispute between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. The water stored in Krishna Rasaga Dam in Karnataka is used for irrigation a number of districts and for meeting the needs of the city of Bengaluru. The water stored in Metur Dam in Tamil Nadu is used for crops grown in the Delta region of the state. 
the downstream dam in tamil nadu can only be filled up if water is released from the upstream one located in karnataka therefore both state can't get as much as water they need for people in their state this leads to conflict the central government has to step in and see that a fair distribution is worked out for the both state so the central government allotted 490 TMC of water annually to Tamil Nadu and 282 TMC to Karnataka what is TMC beta 1000 million cubic feet it is the volume measurement of water now coming to the second example the indus water treaty between india and pakistan has been a issue or has been a debatable issue for a long so all this lead to conflict another form of the conflict can be through discrimination discrimination based on caste creed and religion all those again lead to a conflict so the government democratic government have to resolve this conflict when we talk about resolving the conflict the most important thing is maintaining the law and order making the law enforcing the law and seeing that justice is percolated to each and every corner so equality and the justice is again becoming the pillar for the democratic government in the earlier time untouchability was practice now it is banned by law our constitution maker realized that such practice must not be continued and justice can only be achieved when people are treated equally the government recognized and make a special provision for group within society that are unequal for instance in our society there is a general tendency to consider boy child better than a girl child a common example for it is a care for girl child under the name of recent beti bachao beti padhao abhiyan so those are some of the ways where you are trying to resolve the conflict trying to bring in the equality you are trying to bring in justice in society so with this we have completed our chapter we will continue this chapter with exercises and question answer thank you have a nice day